Okay, when we open Power Factory, there are three main areas. This central area is the graphic window. Over there, we will create the graphic of your network, the single line diagram, okay? Here is the output window. There, Power Factory is talking to you. Power Factory is telling you if something is wrong, if something is fine, the activities that it's doing, everything will appear over there, okay? And this area, is basically for two reasons. One of them is for having all the devices that you can use in the construction of your system, but also to manage or to see the different components installed inside your system, okay? Inside Power Factory, we don't call, we don't call the system Power System. We call a project. Project is the name of the basic unit where you can create the model of your electrical power system. The first step, okay, first step. Let's do the following. Go here to file. You will say new. And you can say over, you can see over there, new project. As I said before, the model that we are creating in Power Factory is called project. That is the generic name. Press there. Then, Power Factory will open one of the classical input windows, okay? All the input windows look similar. There is here some area for basic information, and then you have what we call tabs. Depending on the information that we want to include, we can move between the tabs, okay? Here, always, you will find on the top the basic data. The basic data is the minimum data that you need to fill up, okay? The others are just basically additional information for a specific purposes, okay? For instance, this project I will call, how do we call it? Introduction. Introduction. Yeah? I don't know, I cannot see here. Okay, I will press okay. Now, Power Factory is starting to build the model. And you need to define several aspects of that model. For instance, what will be the name of the grid? Project is the big stuff. Is where we will include all the things inside the model. A network or grid is where we will place the electrical components, okay? For that reason, I don't need to change this. If you want to change it, it's not a problem. We can put over there power network, yeah? Sorry, my, my eyes are not as used to be. Be careful here. If your system is 50 or 60, you must be careful. Here we are in Norway, 50 Hertz in Europe, continental Europe is not a problem. But if you are solving a problem that is 60 Hertz, be careful. Because power factory is so good that if you define the network in 50, but you are using model of 60 inside, they will calculate the things differently and the results will be different, okay? That can, that can happen. For instance, in South America, 60 hertz system, we have installed conformers of 50 hertz, time to time for solve a very specific problem, okay? It's not a final solution, but that can be used. Of course, loss of changes, induction change, blah, 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 that is not the case, but be careful, 50 hertz, okay? Then, um, Now you have here the graphic window, empty for you, to create the model that you want to create, okay? Here on the left hand side, you can see all the different components that you can use inside that graphic window, okay? Okay, something very simple. When you are creating your system, 
try to be organized. Try to be organized with the name and try to be organized with the sequence of components. My personal advice, start with the push bars, the nodes. Define the nodes in your electric network. And from there, you will start to install the transformer, the transmission lines, the loads, and so on. But the first one, always try to do the uh, boost bars. There are different type of boost bars over there. However, I don't have the time to explain all the details about every single type. The basic one that you need to use is the terminal, okay? And it's this small one over here. Power factory have what we call the bubble head. Bubble. When we put the cursor or the pointer on the top of something, it will show you for a few seconds some information, okay? What you see over there, boost bar, and you can see element terminal. Element terminal, okay? What I will do is I will create something very basic. Wow. This is bad dreams. Ah. Okay, let's create this. One, two, three boost bar, isn't it? One transformer, one transmission line, one load. How many terminals do I need? One, two, three. Very simple. Click here. When you click here, you will have the terminal ready and you can install any place that you want. You can see here the small symbol, isn't it? And when you press click here, the symbol will appear. One, two, three. Okay? It's three? Yes, it is. At the end, we don't need to keep the push bar here. We can press escape. Could you see the difference in the pointer, isn't it? Because when you have the, the, the terminal on the pointer, you can keep click, 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 and put in more and more terminals, okay? But then, when you press escape, now you are able to double click in any component and edit the component. What we will do is the following. 132 KB, 11 KB, 11 KB. How? Double click here in the first one. Change the name. Change the name. And here, be careful. Power Factory is a software for power system. Power system are three phase. The voltage that you will put over there is a line to line voltage and is a RMS line to line voltage, okay? In this case, 132. Okay? When done, click, jump down. Yes, please. Uh, I'm curious if you put this on the dust bar again. Yeah. On the dust bar. Yes, what happened? And you go into pipe. You're also able to do write in uh, uh, rate in voltage. Yes. Is, is that needed when you are doing the program? If you don't tell the software, that that push bar is 132, you must tell. Yeah, but that's under pipe. I don't understand what you were saying, I'm sorry. No, you have no no voltage, like line, 132, but if you click on the arrow of the pipe and select new project type, you get the option where you can rate the voltage. Yes, but that is because you are adding a pipe. For the push bars, you don't need what he is asking, I believe he he's already used the software. Yes, you can create here a new type of boost bar. If you want to do it, it's okay. But you don't need it. At least for this kind of basic stuff that you are doing. So, okay. 
In fact, I will run the thing and you will see that you didn't need it. There are only few elements inside Power Factory that they don't need a type. And one of them is the load, and the other one is the terminal. But the synchronous generator, transformers, and transmission lines, they require a pipe. Okay? Okay, let me, let me move forward straight forward here. Boost bar number two, what is the voltage? 11, isn't it? And the next one is three, 11, yeah? Are we in the same page, isn't it? Okay, what do we now? What do we need now? Standard grid. The symbol is here. Is the small box with the lines in the middle, okay? If you click over there, and you put here, after you put the object, the graphical object, you can move the object just using the click and dragging, okay? Or also, if you want to change the orientation, you can use the context menu, and the context menu is just here, you can do things like rotate, for instance, where is rotate here? Yes, rotate 180. Will you see this? I rotate 180, or I can put in the original position, okay? I don't like so much the external grids. However, it's typical in distribution systems that you need to use the external grid. What is an external grid? It's basically a Thevenin equivalent. Do you remember the Thevenin equivalent? The Thevenin equivalent, the basic thing is a voltage source in series with one impedance, okay? That impedance can be used for short circuit analysis or can be used for many other um, power system studies. In this case, you are interested on short circuits because you need to run some short circuit studies. For that reason, you can see here the tabs. But now you will be confused because you can see that they are short circuit IC6096. There is ANSI over there. There is another ANSI, there's an, another ESC, IC, and the complete method, okay? Let me tell you the following. In classes, we teach the students, well, I believe that, in the bachelor, we teach the basic stuff about short circuit. The basic stuff about short circuit is what we call the complete method, okay? The other methods that you say that you see over there, they are basically standardized methods. In America, we use ANSI for defining the size of the circuit breakers, the push bars, and so on. In Europe, the IC601 is basically the standard for short circuit analysis and defining Mm, switching equipments and push bar here in Europe, okay? In this course, I don't know if they will take you something different, but the complete method is basically what you need to use, okay? Could you see that? When you see over there, there are many data that you need to complete. Typically, that data is coming from the uh, utility. I mean, if I need to install a new transformer in one substation, if I need to, to install a new transformer in a new, in a new substation, I will require the company give me those values, okay? I think Mm, they will give you the values that you need to put over there or, or 
Have you seen the, the assignment already? I think they will provide to you. You have it over there, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you are retaking. Hmm? Are you taking again the module? No. Oh, why do you have it? And I printed out today for the class. Oh, uh, but they don't have it. They uh, yeah. have it uh, online. Ah, okay. Okay. Over there, you have some data, isn't it? Yeah, uh, let me explore with uh, 100 uh, MEA. Yeah. This is the short circuit. This is the short circuit capacity in MBA. This is the maximum short circuit current. And here you have some other factors that you only change those factors if somebody tells you to change it, okay? If nobody say change it, keep like that, okay? What is telling this? That if you have a short circuit, the, in the terminals, the current will be 43 kiloamps. okay? That is the maximum short circuit current that you will have over there, or the minimum short circuit current, it will be 34, okay? What is the reason that you have maximum and minimum short circuit currents? Because the, during the operation, normal operation of the electrical power system, the demand change, the generation change, the topology change, and it's typically that you have a band for the short circuit, a maximum and minimum. That is the reason that they are asking for two values, okay? Here, I think you need to change nothing, I think. The rod flow? No, nothing, okay? Let me copy those numbers here. Uh, 40, 43 KM. A minimum is 34, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Then let me install a transformer. Okay. Uh, transform. What you need to do is click here, and then you click in the first boost bar, and then click at the second boost bar, okay? When you do that, you will see the transformer properly connected, okay? Here is the two winding power transformer. Click here, then on the top, then here, okay? We have a transformer over there. The transformer require more data and I will fill up the data at the very end, okay? What I will do now is then I need a line, okay? Power factory has the same object for overhead transmission lines and for underground cables. Okay, I mean, later we can go inside and we can change if we are using a overhead transmission line or if we are using a underground cable, okay? And finally, I need a load. Where is the load, the static load? This one. Okay. Could you see? I, I saw the assignment, the assignment have more transformer and more stuff, but it's, it's, it's the same. This is the basic transformer, line, and load. Okay? And also, I cannot solve the coursework here. If you know what I mean. It's not ethical that I do the things for all that. Um, I need to complete the data. This gentleman was asking about types. Here, this is the single line diagram. Here we have graphical objects. When I double click one of those objects, for instance, let me click here the transformer. When I click the transformer, I am opening the network object. I am opening the network object. All the network objects they are E L M S S S. 
if you look at the top element TR2, two winding transformers, that is, that is the element. The element is an object where you put the operating condition, okay? But the model, the real model of that transformer is inside another object. I don't know if you realize that I am using a lot the word object because Power Factory is an object-oriented software, okay? For that reason, he was asking about the type this is the element and this is the type. The type is where the model is defined. For that reason, if you go here to basic data, okay, are you with me in basic data? Then you will select here, new project type, okay? Power Factory has some models already created in the global library. But here in this assignment, I think they are giving you new data. For that reason, you need to create your transformer, okay? What I will do is new type, project type. And now, let me go to basic data. Here is the basic data. This is the minimum data that you need to complete, okay? The first thing that you need on the top is the name. I will not change the name, but I will say this is 100 MVA transformer, 132, 11 KV, 3%. Okay? Uh, let's see, 100 MVA, 132, 11. Okay. Okay. Here, Power Factory has several ways to introduce the data. Okay. Depending of the country, you can receive the data in percentage, but the percentage can represent in different ways. For instance, this representation over here is the short circuit voltage. I mean, that is the voltage drop at the transformer when you have a short circuit. Numerically, it's identical to the impedance of the transformer. However, if you receive the data in other formats, what you need to do is change the format and you can use, for instance, the one that the students love. This is the reactance in per unit and the resistance in per unit. Or you can use any other of those methods, okay? In this case, I will keep, I will keep the 3% over here, okay? Remember, 100 MBA, 132 KV, 11 KV, plume, we have a transformer type. Now you can see, now you can see that the type is connected, is married to the element, and this is the element. I will change the name, it's too long the name. Let me use a TRX, that's all. I need more coffee. Okay. Perfect. The other object that requires full specification is the object line. For that reason, please double click the line. If you double click the line, this is the element line, okay? And in this element, here we have the data for the operating condition. For instance, if this is a transmission line of 100 kilometers, the place to put the data for the length is here. Let's say this is 10 kilometers. Okay? 
But if you have three lines in parallel, you can put here. I mean, here we are adding information to the model, but the model must be defined. And the model must be defined in the type. For that reason, look over here, new project type. Power Factory allows the use of different ways to define the transmission lines. If you are having a real transmission line with the tower, the, the wires, the distances, and so on, you can use the geometrical properties and the tower object, okay? I mean, if you have the real, the real tower with the size and the wires and so on, you can do that. However, in this example, we don't have that. We will use the classical data R and S in ohm per kilometer. Okay? For that reason, I will use the first option. The first option from the top to the bottom, okay? And that is line type, okay? What is the voltage of this transmission line? Well, is the low voltage size of the transformer? Should be 11. I think in the assignment, you need to go to a table and, and find the size of the cable, blah, blah, blah. But they will give you the rate current. I will assume a number, okay? 600 amps. It's coming from the table, 600 amps, okay? And also, from that table, depending of the wire, characteristic of the wire, we can define R and X. But look the units. Ohms per kilometers, ohms per kilometer, okay? Let's say this is one and this is three. One and three. And here, you can identify if you are using a overhead transmission line, the big one, or if you are using underground cable, okay? Are you with me? Good. Let's say here, cable, and I would say, okay, yeah. Then you can see here, the resistance was one ohm per kilometer. But here I have 10 kilometers, 10 multiplied by one, 10 ohms. And then I have 10 kilometers, but the reactant was uh, three, three ohms per kilometer. We have 30 ohms, okay, fine. Good. Now, we need to define the load. Okay? Double click the load. If you want to change the name for one very original name, load. I'm just kidding. Okay? Now, what we need to do is the following. This is a element load. Here, we can define a type of load. We can define a type. However, if you don't define it, Power Factory assume that the model is constant power. What does it mean constant power? That if I define a power demand, watts and VIR, they will be devalued by default, okay? Because if I define a type is to do more interesting things like voltage dependence of the low, frequency dependence of the lows and so on, but that is not for you now, okay? If you put over there, let me put some values here in that row. How much do you want to use over there? <coughs> 
You can use, for instance, 10 megawatts. Let's put here 10 megawatts. Yeah? And I think in the assignment, they are requesting the data in P cosine our factor, uh, let's say 0 0.95 inductive. Okay? Because you can have inductive or capacitive power factor, okay? Okay, you can change here. I will keep inductive, okay? Yeah! Well, let's say, okay. You say, uka, is it? Yeah. Now it's time to do something crazy here. Let's calculate, but let's see if this is working. The best case scenario is that I will run a lot flow, and if everything is fine, the lot flow will appear over there, the numerical results will appear. But if something is wrong, boy, 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 and then we need to identify what is the problem, okay? Okay, to run the lot flow, look this icon on the top. Could you see the three arrows? I love that, sign, that symbol. Any one of you can imagine why three arrows? Power types. Sorry? The power types. Yes, the power is moving. That is the arrow. P, Q, and S. Beautiful. I love the concept. If you click over there, anyone identify that? If you click over there, let me show you, this is another object. And this is the COM, C-O-M object. C-O-M represent commands. Inside power factory, we have commands. Commands, they do something, calculate something. When I say they do something, it's because they can do printing results, exporting results, blah, 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 calculating power flow, okay? Here, you need to define several configurations for the power flow, okay? However, I assume that all of you know that there are different type of methods for lot flow. When we are using just positive sequence, that means that we are using balanced power flow. That means that we assume A, B, C, they, are, they have the same magnitude, 120 degrees apart. The second method is when we are solving systems that they are unbalanced systems. Phase A, B, C, they have different stuff. We need to use the full representation of the system, the A, B, C system. And the final method is a simplified version of this one. The DC, the DC load flow is not a load flow for DC system, no. The DC load flow is a method for load flows that simplify the formulation and we then consider reactive power and voltage, okay? Okay, we will not, we will not do anything different over there, just execute. I got a problem here. What was the problem? Uh, let's see. Do you got a problem over there? Isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's do the following. Will you change the length for one kilometer? Yes. Do you change the... Okay, I will do it again. You change the length for from 10 to 1, okay? If you run the load flow, power factor is talking to you. Power factor is telling you, I am starting the load flow calculation using the Newton-Bradstone algorithm. 
four iterations. I got the results. And now I can go here. Dun, 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 dun. And I can see the numerical results. Beautiful. Look over here. We have here 10 megawatts. Wow, look at the voltage. That cable is on fire. <laughs> Could you see that cable is on fire? Why that cable is on fire? Because this number over here is the loading. And this is saying 127.5. That cable is no good enough. Let me put three cables in parallel, okay? Uh, three cables in parallel. Wow, now it's perfect. Now you can see the voltage here is one. There is almost nothing voltage drop here, but from here to there, wow. This is one per unit. And this voltage over here is 0 0.94. And look the angles, okay? And this number over here is representing the loading of each one of the cables, okay? Could you see that? Simple. Then there are many things that you can do, but I'm not sure about the assignment, to be honest. But this is the basic to run a lot flow. From here, the sky is the limit. Okay, um, one thing that I can teach you easily, don't do this, okay? It's not me. You can do this. Where is copy, 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 copy? Where is copy? You don't see copy? Okay, you can use copy and paste, you can use delete, you can use also undo, I mean the same functionalities that you have in Windows, okay? What you need to be careful is when you copy something, the name is changed, and here you can see that our factory by default use parenthesis, one parenthesis for the new device, okay? You can see here the name, this is three, parenthesis one, yeah? You can see the line also. And let me run the power flow to see if this is not exploding. Oh yes, it's working. No, it's not working, why not? Ah, because I run the, the wrong thing. Yes. Now we have, oh look, the losses. Okay, something quite uh, fast before I move to short circuit, okay? Um, click in any place, white place over there, the right button, okay? And there is something that is called text boxes. This is a context menu, right button. The context menu is open. Could you please create a summary box? To be honest, this system sucks. Because you can see over here that the total load is 20 and the losses are 2.5. Uh, that is more than 10%, isn't it? Wow, that is not typical, okay? That was because I used a transmission line that is rubbish over there, okay? Another thing is, time to time you want to see more variables, results, okay? For instance, imagine that I want, here you can see the current, okay? You can see over there the current, could you see that, yes? But time to time you want to see more results. And if you click on the transmission line and then say 
additional result box. Okay? You click on the transmission line. You can click in any object because you can create additional results in any object, okay? In this case, I am doing for the transmission line, okay? Well, create additional results, please. Okay. Now you have this box over there, but we can edit that box. We can right click, edit format, okay? Now, Power Factory is showing you the results that are presented over there. <coughs> the active power, reactive power, and current magnitude. Are you with me, yeah? You can do something quite interesting here. For instance, you can show the variable, show equal, show the units, and let me add an arrow, okay? I will append an arrow. It was simple, append, arrow. Okay? Are you with me? Then what I will do is double click here. And now you have a massive number of variables that you can show. You can show any one of those variables, okay? Let me see if I can find something weird here. Calculations. Oh, look over here, voltage drop in per unit and voltage drop in um, per unit and percentage. Would you see that? It was very simple. I select calculation parameters, then I got those set of parameters, and I am selecting DU and DUPC, okay? You didn't find it? No. Um, are you here? Yes. Double click. Then here, calculation. And now you should find, oh, Jesus, oh, he's here. Now we find, yeah? Yes. Go. Are you with me, yeah? Fine. And let's say, let me put more decimal places. I am not, I'm, I'm not paying for that. And also they are not taxes. I can use it. Ta -da! If you have problem because you cannot see all the size, right button and you will select adapt width. Adapt width. If you want. Okay? Now you can see over there the voltage drop. If you need to find more data for your assignment, you can find the variables over there and you can get the numbers, okay? They are another way to get the numbers. You can get the numbers in the graphic and copy on paper, but time to time if you are working with something big, it's annoying. Or you can use here the, the model manager, yeah? The model manager. And inside the model manager, for instance, you can go to the push bars, yeah? And here you can see the results in a table. And the good news is you can take this to uh, Excel. For instance, you can do here You understand what I mean? I mean, you can get the results in the single line diagram, the graphic, but to be honest, we don't use that in real life. I mean, if you have 1,000 boost bars and 2,000 branches, you don't do that, okay? Okay, finally.
Short circuits. What is a short circuit? What is the definition of a short circuit? No resistance. No resistance. Mm. But I can have a no resistance here, and it's a no short it's not a short circuit. I might I mean I can give you a resistor zero and that is not a short circuit. Ah, you are telling the important thing. When you have a potential differential, when you have potential differential volts, and you install over there something with relative low, relative low impedance, we are creating a short circuit. Yes, you were telling something, yes? It's the same. Wow. Okay, good. Now I need to teach you very briefly the other icon here. This is the COM SHC. This is the COM short circuit analysis, okay? The COM short circuit analysis is extremely, extremely boring. I mean, log flow is boring, but short circuit is even boring, more boring. Uh, the short circuit analysis, the first thing that you need to define is the method. To be honest, Power Factory is a software for big guys in the companies. And when we used for teaching, it was a problem many years ago because the calculation methods, the IC60909, the BDE, blah, blah, blah. All those methods over there, they are standardized methods and they are used in the utilities. But in classes, we don't teach that at the very beginning. But a few years ago, Power Factory understand that we use the software for teaching and they include this complete method. The complete method is the method that we use in classes. For instance, if we have the external grid and we apply the short circuit here, yes, a three phase voltage short circuit, well, it will be the voltage source in series. This is basically, um, if we have a three-phase short circuit and something like that, it will be the voltage divided by the Thevenin impedance. That's all, that is the short circuit calculation. Of course, here I am talking in per unit, and here in per unit, okay? Okay, but what is important for you is that you need to use the complete method. If you remember, in the external grid, we define maximum and minimum, remember? When we select here, maximum or minimum, we are selecting 43 or 34 Ka. Okay, are you with me? Initially, I will left the maximum, and then I will say execute. If I do in this way, if I do in this way, Power Factory will show me the results of the short circuit in every single boost bar. And it's taking a while, what the hell is happening? Oh yes, now it's showing me Now it's showing me here the three important variables, okay? I highly suggest that you see the definition, that you see the definition of each one of them. Where is the, ah, oh, it's here. Okay, 
I use this button over here to show you the legend, okay? Could you see the legend? This button on the top. When I say show the legend, I am showing here the initial short circuit current, the transient short circuit current, the big short circuit current, okay? Those are the results that you can see here. And it's time for my next class, okay? Okay, then if you need to change the method, sorry, if you need to change the uh, calculation to minimum, you execute and you will get a different value over here, okay? Short circuit is quite boring. Blood flow is even worse, it's boring. Um, I think you need to work in your uh, your assignment okay if you have problems building the network there are a short video uh, that i gave you like mm, 20 minutes creating a system but also there is a four hour video to do everything by a step by a step and so on watch the videos i'm not sure if i have short circuit videos but i i believe they, there is a video over there for short circuit if you have any question please feel free to email me, okay? Uh, I, I am extremely happy to have you. This is a very busy time for me, but I will try to do my best, okay? Do you have any question? Uh, when you quit the program. Sorry? Uh, when you... Close the program, yeah. yes. Um, you get which one? Yeah. No, uh, if you want to click all of them, I mean, I will not use Porsche because Porsche, the project is cleaning all the data, blah, 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 blah. And I have a database that is like 50 gigabytes. That will, lucky. That will take like a few days, okay? But um, you don't need to do anything over there, okay? Something that is very important. I Thank you for, for reminding me that. I don't know if you realize, but Power Factory has not safe button. You are, I mean, in Word, you are writing your document, and at the end, you need to save the document, remember? Because otherwise, you close the system, and everything will be deleted. But here, no. Power Factory has what we call a hot database. A hot database means that what you are doing it's going directly to the database. For that reason, every single change that you do, it will go to the database, okay? I suggest the following, my dear students, okay? Um, here, the data manager, here, the data manager, allow you to see the project that is active, okay? I highly suggest that you save copy of what you are doing, okay? To save copies about what you are doing is deactivate, okay? Copy, and then paste. Could you see that appear below? If I say paste, it will keep copying and pasting, copying and pasting, okay? I highly suggest that you create several copies and start to do something, it's running, perfect. Uh, if I will start to do something different, I will start from the next project, okay? It's a good idea because if you start to modify things and suddenly it's not working, you don't have the way to go back to the previous project, okay? Okay, I need to run. I have a guest lecture today and then I have classes.